Hi, Renee here. Um, today I have the card making workshop for Hawthorne that I'm going to walk through with you. It makes three different cards, five of each. So this kit will make 15 cards. One of the really cool things about this um, kit is it comes with a exclusive stamp set and a matching die set. So this is a really, a really neat um, card kit. So there are some special techniques. We've got some rock and roll stamping. We've got some second generation stamping. I'm going to be using some watercolor pencils. Now we are going to be stamping on paper that is not watercolor paper and we're going to be stamping with water-based inks. So be very careful if you do this not to use a lot of water and you'll see, I'll show you my method to make sure I don't use too much water. So the colors that I'm using are sunflower, cranberry, let's see, orange, and honey. Now I do have sad news about our watercolor pencils. Um, the company that made our pencils for us just recently went out of business. Um, they have found a new supplier, so as soon as they come back in, which they're ex they're they're estimating January, um, but as soon as they come back in. Um, I will get a set and I will try them out and I'll let you know if they're similar to these, better, worse. I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Um, so, and my pencils are getting a little short. You can see I've, I've used them quite a bit. <clears throat> so it'd probably be time for some new ones anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go card by card. Oh, and the inks we're using. Saffron, paprika, and charcoal. So you don't really need a lot of inks with this one. Um, the kit also comes with some of our chunky twine, which I really like, and this is the color mink. You also get all of your card bases and all your envelopes. And so all you'll really need is adhesive, um, watercolor pencils if you want to do it that way. You can really color it any way you want. I'm going to show you how I've done it, um, which is a copycat of what they've done, and then your inks. So we will just go ahead and get started. So we'll start with this card number one and card number one is the watercolor card. So it looks like this. So I will put that off to the side. <clears throat> so what I like to have when I'm doing watercolor is a paper towel. And I like our um, water brushes. You can really use any brush you like. For this, I would use one that has a pretty small tip. This one has a really small tip, so I would use a fine point because um, we're going to be doing some stuff that's like pretty small. So what we're going to do first is, since I've already die cut, <clears throat> I like to die cut first and then stamp on my die cut. I have a hard time lining up my die cut on a stamped image. So what I use, and I've used this before, is the Misty. Um, I love this. I also have one of the We Are Memory Keepers ones that got taken off the market because they stole the they stole the idea from Misty and Misty had a patent. Um, but I have to tell you the Misty's better. Um, I'm not getting anything from them. I don't get anything low cost. I don't get a kickback. I don't get a commission. Nothing. I'm just telling you, this is a product that I think is worth the money. It is a little pricey but it's worth the money. So the first thing I do is in order to get everything lined up, especially on uh, stamps like this, I mean, this was our die cut. These are very intricate and it would be nearly impossible to line it up. So if you don't have a Misty, what I would suggest is you stamp it first and then you line it up on your die cutting machine. I'm just not that good at it. so. You will go ahead and I'll just let you know that the die cuts die they the, the dies themselves cut perfectly I have a um, big shot and it worked great so what I do is I plop it in here and I get it lined up in the hole and I try to save uh, one of my papers from my die cuts where my die is kind of in the middle, so I'm not stamping right up close to the edges, because that is one thing with the Misty. <clears throat> you can't really stamp directly up to the edges. It doesn't work all that well. So I pick it up, put it in there. So now it's on my, <clears throat> on my panel. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find this and plop it in there. 
and it should stay pretty well. We shouldn't need any washi tape or anything. So we'll make sure that it's lined up in there and it's looking, it's looking pretty good. There we go. So on this one, you just follow your instructions and it says that your ink is charcoal. So we're going to ink it in charcoal and then we're gonna add the color with our watercolor pencils. Now we also need to stamp our dye, I mean stamp our banner um, with paprika. So we'll do that next after we finish with the charcoal. I try to do all my stamping and then everything else. Um, but in this case, I'm gonna show you each card individually. So we will come back to the stamping. Okay. <clears> then <throat> you'll get to see me reset everything. And I like to make sure that I have a lot of ink on here. My pad is pretty juicy. You can see where I've squished some out and used it for watercoloring. That's another thing you can do if you don't have the pencils, but you have the inks. Um, you can absolutely just color your stamps with your water brush with your inks. The inks are all water-based, or I'm sorry, the exclusive inks are water-based. We do have some other inks that are not water-based. So let's see how that looks. Now I think I'm going to go over that one again. Now that's the good thing about the Misty is since I didn't get it as crisp as I wanted, which that'll happen with a new a new ink, or I'm sorry, a new stamp. Once this, you've used the stamp a few times, you'll it'll work a lot better. <clears throat> but the Misty's really good about, because everything's going to be lined up perfectly. You don't have to stand on your head and try to see it through a through a block and all that. <clears throat> so that looks much better, much, much better. So I'm just going to clean this off with my stamp chamois. If you're not familiar with our stamp chamois, they're wonderful. All you use is water. That's it. And it's just a, just a chamois cloth. And what I do is I just squish it up. And I just have a little glass container that I keep it in so that it doesn't get on any of my papers. So we will go ahead and pull this off and put it back on our carrier sheet so we don't lose it because <clears throat> I'm famous for that. So this one is done. We'll pop it out. Just use your tweezers to get in there so you don't bend it. So we'll put this aside and then uh, we'll go ahead and stamp our little banner that we need. So we'll take that away and I'll use it again on our next card. So here are our banners. Um, I'll probably just use this one here in the middle. And this is pretty small, so we'll go ahead and put one right here too, okay? So put your, get your stamp set. And the one we're using for this one is thanks so much. You can always use thank you cards and then just drop it where you want it to be. And these stamps are kind of, they're sticky. That's how they're supposed to be. So use your tweezers, or if you don't have tweezers, um, you can use anything metal that's not gonna puncture it. And it shouldn't stick to that item. It sticks to my nails horribly. So we'll get that lined up. That looks good. Now this one's small, so you probably could have just used, I could have just used a block, but I wanna show you this technique several times so that you can get a feel for it. And for this one, we want paprika, which is one of my favorite new colors. I just love this color. <clears throat> it just screams fall to me. That's just a wonderful fall color. We're here in East Tennessee, so we still have green trees. Things aren't things aren't changing over quite yet. And um, but today was a very fall-like day, so that was kind of nice, except for the fact that I had uh, water aerobics this morning, and um, I go to the Y, and they don't have the sides up to the pool yet. Um, our pool is enclosed during the winter time and then in the summertime they take off the fabric walls and uh, make it an open pool. Well, something happened and they have to order some new pieces. So today we were swimming with the wind blowing and it was pretty chilly. So today did feel like fall. Okay, 
Okay, so we'll put this back on our carrier sheet. If for some reason your stamps ever get unsticky, just wash them and then sit and let them sit and dry and that'll bring back the sticky. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of this for the moment. We'll use it on the next card. But for this card, what we have to do next is we have to do the coloring. So the way that um, I did it, I did a sample one just to play around with it to see how I liked it, was I did all of my coloring first and you don't have to worry about your coloring being perfect. Do try to stay in the lines, although, yeah, I go out of the lines sometimes. So what you wanna do is you just wanna put some color down. So on these, I want all of my big leaves to start with this deep cranberry color. And then we're going to work our way out. <clears throat> and I'll show you what to do if you didn't get enough of the color that you wanted on. I'll show you a little, a little trick to get some more color. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and put, and you'll notice I'm not being, I want this one a little bit more red than the others. And then I think what I'm going to do is do a few of these with red. And my old eyes are screaming at me, so let me get my glasses. And I'll tell you stories while I'm working. We uh, just went to the eye doctor, and I <clears throat> ordered my first pair of bifocals. I'm feeling a little old, but I think it'll be for the best. And I only did it on my sunglasses because for a couple of reasons. Well, when I'm driving, you know, the distance looks great because of my glasses, but the dash looks really horrible. I can't, you know, everything's blurry on the dash. And then we do, um, we do trips, just road trips from time to time. And I like to do crafts while we're going down the road. So I'll usually crochet or do some stitchery or something like that. <clears throat> well, it's really difficult to do that because I can't, my sunglasses are distance, so I have to leave them off, but then I'm squinting, and then when I look up to see anything with the scenery, which I like to do that like a constant, you know, look down, look up, look down, look up, but I don't really, I can't, because it's, it's all, it's just not good. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this really works out well, so we shall see. <clears throat> they should be ready sometime next week. My husband had to dig out some plain old sunglasses for me. I can see and I can see well enough during the day to drive without glasses. At night, it's no, I need them. So that was orange that I just used. So let's go with, see, this is also something you want to look at. Um, this says sunflower and this says honey, and you would think the sunflower would be darker than the other one, but look at the tips. So you wanna look not only at the bottoms, but you wanna look at the tips. So make sure that you're, oops, I almost did it backwards anyway. Um, I want that darker yellow first, and then I'll do the lighter yellow. And I think I'm gonna use this darker yellow on some of these pieces that I'm not gonna do any water on at all because they're so small, like these little guys right here. These look like, these look like pussy willows, but I'm not 100% positive. So they're probably not even the right color, but you know what? Artistic license. I'm gonna take some artistic license here. So let's do some of the honey on this. We'll save the tips of those leaves. We'll do um, the sunflower on the tips. We'll do one more on this, one more on this. And I already did that one. I gotta do these little, but I'm just gonna go ahead and call them pussy willows because that's you know the easiest. So we were um, recently in Washington DC and um, had a really good time going to different museums and doing all that kind of stuff. But what really surprised me was how many trees were dropping acorns. And when they dropped, they were like, missiles they just they came down fast and I thought wouldn't that be something I have to go to the hospital and they asked me how'd you how'd you get hurt I got hit by an acorn wouldn't that be something okay so just one more and then we're gonna start with the magic see so right now this looks like a child did it it's kind of a mess 
um, I'll bring it up a little bit closer so you can see what I'm talking about. So you see that? That's really not that pretty. Um, but we're going to fix it. So take your water brush. Don't squeeze it, but do make sure you do have some water in the barrel. But don't squeeze it um, and dry it off. I know you're going to be thinking, but there's no water on here now. How are you going to make this work? There's water in there. So what you do is start in the dark color and just do little and you can start to see how it's moving color. Now this still feels like I had too much water. So we'll do some more. And you start to see how, how it's smoothing that all out. So let me bring that up for you. And see how that smoothed out that color? Now right there, I think I need to do something a little different. I need to add some more, oops, sorry. I need to add some more of that orangish and the red color. So here's here's a secret to how you can do that. Just a little tip. Just take any piece, just a piece of paper and scribble some of the color on it. So we're gonna do the cranberry and we're gonna do the orange, okay? And then all you need to do, don't squeeze your, don't squeeze it, just rub it around and you'll see it starts picking up that color. And then you can come back in here and you can put more of the color in. So see how that worked out? And we'll do the same thing with the orange. We'll give it a little bit more orange as well. Kind of mix those colors together and get more of a, more of a fall. Now you do need to be careful because this ink is not waterproof and the paper is not watercolor paper. So you can see that my ink is starting to blur a little bit. So I probably do not want to play with that one anymore. So we'll do these guys and these guys are easy. They're just a few little strokes and you're going to be done with them. So, so I think you get the idea of what I'm doing. So I will go ahead and finish this up. I'll speed up the footage a little bit and maybe throw a little bit of fun music on, underneath it. And then, um, then we'll get started with putting our card together. So I've got that all colored. I'll go ahead and bring it up here so you can see, oops, went the wrong direction. So you can see it a little bit closer. So you see, it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll notice I went out of the lines a couple times and the leaves aren't, you know, they're not uniform, but you know what? Leaves in, in nature are not uniform. So there you go. Okay, so we'll get rid of that little card. So we'll let this sit and dry just a little bit and get rid of my, watercolor crayons or my watercolor pencils real quick and we'll go ahead and just start putting the card together so the instructions will show you exactly how to cut all of your papers so they look like these are what your cutting guides look like so it tells you which papers to use and how to cut them and then these are your zip strips and it tells you how how short to cut them so you can use them and it also tells you 1d means it's for card one uh, 3B means it's for card three. And then you'll have, you'll have these ones that say P1 accent, P2 accent. That means it's for project two or project one. Okay. So, and then you have your diagram that tells you how far everything needs to be in and the sizes and where your fold is, and then a picture of your final card. So what I always do is I look at my final card and I look at it and in my mind and build it backwards. So I see that Okay, so this white piece is gonna be on the bottom. Then I'm gonna put the brown and the paprika. And then it looks like I'm gonna wrap some twine around it. So I'm gonna, I don't want to build it directly on this background because I know that I wanna wrap my twine. So make sure you look before you get started. 
Now it will also tell you, um, it'll also tell you attach 1A to the card base. So that's this yellow to attach it to your card base. Then it'll tell you attach 1C to 1B and then 1D to 1C. So this is D and C and then embellish with the twine and then you can start putting it all together. So if you follow the instructions step by step, they're pretty good, but I think it's also a good idea to look at it first. So I've talked long enough. This is all dry. It doesn't take long because you don't use much. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this white piece, which is 1B, and we're going to attach 1C, and then we're going to attach 1D. Okay? So let me get my, you can use any adhesive you want. Now you also want to see, okay, I think we're going to use the darker side of the paprika. And that's the other thing with our papers. They are all two-sided. They have two colors of the same tone or two tones of the same color. I said that backwards. Um, so you have a lot of flexibility and the two tones go together. So that's always really nice. It gives you a lot, a lot more, um, a lot more, I think, ease of putting things together and making different things, um, different things look nice together. And so now we're just going to stick Stick that on there. There you go. I think if I were doing it again, I would put this brown one on the paprika first. That way, if I didn't cut it exactly perfect, I can trim it before putting it on the white. And then we need some twine. And because I'm playing with twine, I need my I need my shoe for my tape, so we'll put that there. So it looks like we're going to do two, two rows of twine. So what I do first, get myself a piece of tape and get it started. So we'll put a piece of tape on here to hold the end of that twine. I've also seen people use like the really strong double-sided tape, like this stuff. Um, I've seen people use that as well and that works great too. So it's whatever you are comfortable with, whatever you like to use. It's, you know, it's, it's art, there's no right or wrong. Okay, so I did two rounds. I'm putting another piece of tape right here to hold it in place. Push it down real good. And then make sure you're using your ribbon scissors, not your paper scissors. Okay. Here's your wine, honey. Oh, somebody brought me wine. You said you needed wine. Oh, I did. <laughs> I don't remember saying that, folks, but I must have. Because, you know. It might have been twine. Oh, it may have been twine, I said. It sounds like wine, though, so I'll take it. Thank you. Okay, so then you're just gonna, it looks like they just tie it through one, so we'll do that and see how it looks. Just tie yourself a knot. And I wouldn't do a, I wouldn't double knot it because your cards, you know, they're not gonna be out in the hurricane, hopefully. And the more knots you, you tie, the thicker everything is gonna get. Craft shows. So. You're saying I'm doing a craft show in the uh, hurricane? Around here, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the craft shows here, it's kind of funny, um, here in East Tennessee, they do them outside. And, you know, I do paper crafts. That Paper crafts and outside just do not mix. So, okay. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to attach this piece to our card stock, to our card base. And I always check it to make sure that it's the right size. Um, you can always cut it down with your paper scissors or your paper cutter if necessary. Um, no one is going to fault you if your card is not perfectly A2 size. And if you hear a little tinkling, that is Peanut deciding that it is time to eat his dinner, even though it's been sitting there for him for probably a good 45 minutes. Sorry about that. You know, you plan and you plan. And then things happen. So that looks good. It fit pretty good. Okay. 
So now we can attach this to this. Now what I would do on this, because you've got twine back here, I would go ahead and use some thin foam tape um, to attach that. So I'm gonna use my 3M tape. It's getting really small. It's almost time to buy a new one. That's... And for this, I don't use my ribbon scissors. I use my paper scissors that are um, nonstick. So you wanna I'll put this on there. And then what I'm gonna do down here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it to size, but then I'm gonna split it in half and put half underneath the twine and half above the twine. And then I think if we do one more right here, we'll be good. Okay. So we'll put that on there and I think we'll be good. So push it down real good. It makes it a lot easier to pull off the, uh, the tape. And sometimes if you just grab, you know, something with a sharp point, you can either use your, um, your tweezers, or if you have one of these pickup sticks, they work really good or your fingernails. Yeah, people ask me, are those your fingernails? And I'm like, yep, I paid for them. So, but the problem with uh, these type of fingernails, they don't have a very very sharp edge, so it's hard to pick this type of stuff apart. There we go. Okay, so, and then this is just gonna center on this. So you can just eyeball it, or you can use, um, if you've watched me for any length of time, you know, I have this little guy, so you could set it up, put it on your, put it on your board, give yourself a line at three quarters of an inch because it goes three quarters up from the bottom and three quarters in from the side. So if I line it up like right about there and I am, I am good, Oops, except it moved on me. And then you can just line your little guy up there. Okay. That's kind of a good way if you're not real comfortable with putting stuff down centered. So there's that. So now we're ready to go ahead and put our sentiment on and we can put our, our center, um, I don't know what we would call that, our floral. It's not really a floral or lethal. Um, and this is so little, I think I'm gonna use some of this liquid glue. Okay, and then this just gets centered right here. I probably didn't need to go all the way to the edge with the glue, but it's okay, it won't be a problem. Oh, my husband gave me a note. He said it is foliage. Okay, now we all know. It's our foliage. So there's that. Now you can put this up on foam if you as well. However, you're gonna start getting too thick and if you're mailing this, that might be problematic. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'll probably be mailing these or donating them to a place that uses them for mailing. So, and I'm just gonna put the glue on the inside because some of those branches, um, were hanging off the edges and I didn't I don't want them to be sticking and you can just sit this any way that looks nice for you there's no right or wrong okay so there we go and that glue will that glue will hold really well so there's card number one and like I said the kit makes five you can make five of these so you can you know do all of your stamping at one time and then do all your coloring and then do all your water whatever works for you. You could also use crayon if you'd rather do that and then not do any watercolor. Um, you could use alcohol markers if you like. Now I would be careful with alcohol markers because this ink will run quite a bit with alcohol markers. Um, you're gonna wanna use a alcohol safe ink and I really like the way that this charcoal color looks on this card. So for me, I think I'm gonna stick with that because I've got the other five, the other four still to make. Okay, so that's card number one. So let's go ahead and get started on card number two, but first we have to take a drink, you know. Mm -mm -mm. Very good. I'm a box wine girl. My husband calls it my adult juice box. And um, 
I really like. It's called Red Revolution. And oh, Peanut is here. Did you finish your dinner? Maybe someone will get you your chicken jerky. He gets chicken jerky after he finishes all of his dinner. So he always comes and lets us know that he finished his chicken, he finished his dinner. He is not a very good eater. Now, if you give him treats, he will eat those like crazy. So, okay. So on this card, we're going to be using what's called a rock and roll technique. Um, it's been around for a really long time, so a lot of you may already know it. If so, just shoot ahead. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to take our take our die um, left over, and we are going to try to remember how this goes in here. Is that right? Nope. Um, let's see. I don't know if you can hear, he has to do tricks to get his treats. I know, it's so horrible to live here, isn't it? Oh man. I guess I had it right the whole time. It does go like this, it just didn't look right. Okay, so make sure you get it in there so that it fills everything well. Yeah, and he, um, I don't know if you can hear them in there, Peanut likes to try to eat his entire chicken jerky in one fell swoop, which is not really good for him. So we make him sit and then we break it into pieces and he gets little pieces um, and chews them up before he gets another one. So I tell you what, it's like having kids, it really is. Okay, so we've got this piece to stamp. We've also got, I don't know if you can see it, we're also going to be doing these pine cones, but I'm gonna do this one first. And this is paprika and saffron, and it tells you technique. Ink your stamp in saffron, then gently roll the edges in paprika before stamping. So I'll show you how I do that. And this is one of those techniques that you get a really cool effect, but it's never the same twice. So just be prepared and just have fun with it. We'll just let it happen the way it happens. So we're going to take saffron first. This is one of our old ink pads. So if any of you have the old ink pads, they can sometimes be a little bit tricky to open. So I will show you real quick. So when you've got our old ink pads, um, what I have found to work best is put your finger under here and your thumb here and kind of bend it and pull at the same time on the sides. And then once you need to close it, just the same thing, bend and push with your bottom finger. And then there you go. It was a, it's a really neat design, um, but it is hard for people. And that's why we changed it. So you've got it all inked up in saffron. Then you're gonna take your paprika, and these are our new pads. They're magnetic, they're awesome. You're gonna take your new pad, and usually you would just roll your stamp around it if you're using a block but since I'm using the misty it's just easier for me to go around the edges and just put a little bit of paprika ink on the edges and um, don't worry it's it's no matter how you do it it's gonna look nice it is a really neat technique and um, I've used it quite a bit and I really like it and you can kind of see where all your paprika ink is so you can add a little more if you want. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that that goes all the way on. Because the one thing about this technique is you can't really add more without starting to make it look muddy. You can always add a little more of the light color, but if you start adding more of the dark color, I've just noticed that it doesn't, it just doesn't turn out very well. So. There we go. I think that looks great. Now the other thing with dye-based inks is, you see it's a little bit splotchy. As it dries, it's going to even out. So don't worry about a little bit of splotchiness. Okay, so we get our stamp chamois. We'll clean this all up. Let that sit there and dry just a minute. While we clean up, put that, put this back on. Now put this back on here. Okay, so the next thing we need to stamp is um, these guys. So we're gonna pop that out, put it aside. So we have two of those that we need to do. So I'm just gonna put my magnet just to hold this still. 
and I've got my two little my two little die cuts. They cut so nice. This would be so hard to fussy cut. So, oh, before I do that, I want to put my stamp in there. Okay. Now these you got to be really careful. Make sure you're putting the side down that has all the ridges inside and not the solid. Now what the solid would be good for is if you just wanted like a, um, just the shape itself, like a uh, silhouette of the shape. There we go. Okay, whoops, I got a little bit of, a little bit of water still sitting on there. Let's make sure that's dry before we move on. Where did I do with my paper towel that I had from water coloring? Well, oh, there it is. So we'll just dry that off a little bit. Okay. There's that. Pop that up. And I've never used the stamp before, so you want to season it. And you can just season it by touching it with your fingers. Okay. So we'll put this guy in here. And I think it's telling us to use charcoal on this guy. So we'll grab our charcoal ink and we will ink this guy up. And you always want to store your ink pads with the ink pad upside down. So our inks are really good because they're designed that way. So if you keep your ink stored with the label up, it's the ink pads facing down. So that keeps the ink on the surface of your pad. So if you have other ink pads, just make sure you store them whichever direction they need to be so that the pad itself is upside down. And that first one stamped really good. I didn't even have to do a double stamping on it. So, and I thought I might since this is a new stamp set. I can see these being really cute for like place cards if you're having people over for dinner and you just make cute little cards with their names on them and put these little, um, these little acorns. Let's get that cleaned up and put away. Put the little acorns on the, on the name card. That would be really cute. And then everyone would call you Martha Stewart, but just let them do it. It doesn't matter. Okay. And if you see a shadow, it's my husband closing the the zoo exhibit. My window, it's getting dark outside, so he closed the window for me. Thank you. I'm sure my neighbors walk by and they see me talking to myself because I face the window when I'm doing videos. So I'm sure they think I'm a crazy person. Okay, so we're going to do Grateful for You. This stamp set is so small, but it has so many really good sentiments and um, stamps in it. I'm really surprised. And this is one that just it comes with the kit. So, and it's exclusive to the kit. You can't get it any other way. So, oops, pick that up. I didn't push hard enough. And we'll season this stamp because it's new as well. Okay. And then this is going to be charcoal ink on the paprika paper. Now, if you look at the instructions, it will tell you to use light paprika, so you'll know you're using the light side of the paper. Okay, so we'll grab our little, our little banner that we already die cut, and there's the dark side, and there's the light side. So we're gonna use the light side. So we'll pop it in here, and then we need charcoal ink. I really like this kit because it only uses a few colors of ink and um, you really get a really nice look just from the few colors that you do use. Okay, and we will stamp that and see how it looks. Now be careful if it does this, pull it straight down because you don't want to Rub it sideways. Oh, that looks really good. That turned out good as well. Okay, so we are all done with our stamping for this card. So we will put this back on our carrier sheet. Put our misty out of the way and it's time to build our card. And we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna take a look, see what goes underneath what. Oh, we have a technique here of tearing. So what we wanna do is we wanna take 
this piece and let's see tear one half inch off one end of 2c that's this and attach so it looks like we're using the dark side of it and our paper is so we want to tear off about an inch so it sprout right there our paper has a white core which gives it a really cool look when you do tearing so there you go isn't that neat i'll bring it up so you can see it isn't that a neat look i like that a lot Another thing you can do is you can sand the edges of our paper and it'll expose that white, which is really nice too. I like that a lot. Okay, so first thing they wanna do is they want us to attach this to the card base. Now, <clears throat> if you're not sure which color to have up, take a look at other things that are on the card. So this one, we see that it matches the sentiment strip. So we would know that's the right side. That would not be. Now, if you wanted that look, you could certainly do that and do the dark side and you'd have a couple different tones. I'm going to do this one exactly according to their instructions, but I may do one or two of my other ones with the dark side up. And I might even um, experiment with doing this with the light side. So, okay. So this, when this goes on, you're going to have a quarter inch on all your corn on all your sides. Um, so what I do is I start at one side and make sure I have a quarter, quarter, and quarter. And then you can just lay it down and you know you're going to be right. Okay, so we'll put that on. Then we need to put this piece on. Now you see you have two sides. You want to make sure you're using that side. <clears throat> when you're doing your cutting from the cutting guides, make sure that you're paying attention to which side needs to be up when you're making your cuts. This one probably wouldn't have made much of a difference. Um, because it's just it's a um, just a straight cut now the one thing you do want to watch for is if you have like a one-way design like these guys are a one-way design and you may have wanted your acorns to go up and down and you've got them sideways so that's just something that you need to watch out for okay so this is just a quarter inch up as well so I'm just gonna eyeball it and put that down and it is flush on the two sides so that's another one that maybe if you wanted to, you could put that down first to make sure it's the right size so you can trim it if necessary. I'm, I'm living on the wild side today and just putting stuff down. Okay, so the next piece you wanna put down is this. And this is going to go up a half an inch. So it's gonna come up this um, just about a quarter of an inch more. And it's going to be flush on this side. So I'm gonna do it right about there. Okay. So the next thing we want to put on is foliage. I'm learning. So we'll go ahead and put some glue on this. And this is also one that you could push. You could pop it up with um, foam tape if you liked. I think I'm going to leave this particular one a little flatter. And that's the other thing is you have five cards that you're making that you can try different things with each of your cards. And if you think, you know, I think I'd really like to do that twine wrap again. This particular kit most likely will have more than enough twine because they gave you an entire roll of the twine. So, okay, so we're gonna put this on here and um, I'm just kind of looking at the picture to see how far over they're doing it and where they're, where they're letting things fall. So that's about where they did it. Okay, and then they have <clears throat> the sentiment strip over the top as well that kind of is about right there. I think I kind of like that there. So we'll put that on. Now I did notice that it also has you take that twine and tie a bow. If tying bows is something you don't enjoy, don't do it. Just leave it off. Or I'll show here. I'll show you a different, a different technique if bows are just not your friend. So make sure you're using your ribbon scissors. Cut yourself a piece. Doesn't have to be anything fancy because you're going to cut it down again. And then tie yourself a knot. Okay. There you go. Then just trim your ends to the length you want. And then you can put that on instead of a bow and it still gives you that texture. That one may be a little bit too long. It still gives you the texture 
And um, something else you might want to do, and I'll show you something I do quite a bit, is I uh, fray the little, the fray the edges. And I like using my little picker tool because it has one end that's pokey. And I just poke it in there and fray my edges. And that gives it just that rustic, that rustic look. Okay, we'll do the other side. And then I, the best way I have found to adhere these and to keep them adhered, well, there's two ways. You can use a really strong liquid glue, something like our liquid glass um, or something like that. I have issues with my use of liquid glass. I always use too much and then it splooshes out and it's called liquid glass for a reason. When it dries, it looks like glass. So. For me, that ends up with a big old mess. So another way that I have found that works really well is get yourself some of these. Um, and I like the mini, and they also have ones that are called micro. <clears throat> I don't think I have a package to show you micros. Um, and this is what they look like. They're on this roll. And let's see. There's the first one. And I usually keep a piece of rubber band around this, but I have somehow lost my little rubber band along the way. So what I do is I take this, put it on that little glue dot. Here we go. And then I make sure that the glue dot is not hanging over the edges, that it is just on the part I want it to be on. And then you can attach it. And there you go. Now, if you still have a little bit of the adhesive, because that'll sometimes happen, you can't get it tucked under perfectly, take your, um, this is this is just my powder tool that I use for embossing or making stickers not sticky. You could do the same thing on this. Just put a little bit of that on there. That'll cover that sticky, and there you go. It's all gone, okay? Okay, so now it's time to put our little pine cones on. And these cards are taking longer than they normally would because I'm talking so much. So don't be worried that you're gonna be here for you know a day and a half making some cards. Um, you should be able once you've got once you've got the first one done, it should go a lot quicker because you'll know exactly what you need to do. <clears throat> I'm guessing the longest time will probably be the water coloring on that first card. That's probably going to take the most amount of time, unless you're just a really fast watercolorer. And I know they exist. It's not me. Okay, so there's our second card. That turned out really cute, too. I really like these cards. Okay, so for our third card, we're going to do a technique called generation stamping, second generation stamping. We're going to need charcoal, paprika, and saffron. We're going to use all three of our colors. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my stamping first. So um, I need to do, let's get this out of the way. I need this little tiny one. This is our little tiny acorn. So I'm going to put one there, one there, and I'm going to use this one here in the middle. Okay. And we only need one of those. So in my little packet here, I have my one little acorn. Okay, so we're gonna put that in there. But first we want to nest our stamp, our little tweezers. And go ahead and pick that up and season it. Put our nest him in there. Okay, so this little guy is done in paprika. So we'll go ahead and get him stamped up. I think I'm going to do all the things paprika. I just like it. It's so pretty. Okay, that turned out perfect. We don't even know double stamping on that one either. Okay, get that all wiped up. And put it back on our 
thing here. The other thing that we need to stamp is our sentiment. So we'll do that before we put away our Misty. So put that guy to the side. And we're gonna be stamping on this. And so we wanna take a look. It wants us on the light side of the paprika, so it's gonna be on this side. And we're also using paprika ink. Now, this is having you do, and if you've watched me before, you know I'm horrible with these, it's having you take this, this stitch line and it's having you stamp it several times um, to get a straight line. And I am, I didn't put this on right, let me fix that. I am absolutely horrible at that. So to save myself frustration and to save you frustration watching me, I'm not gonna do it. So there you go. Um, but I am going to stamp the So Blessed to Have You sentiment. That is so sweet. And this would be really nice if you had people come in to stay with you for the holidays. And um, in their room, just have a, a little nice little, um, maybe a little thing of candy or um, put a tic -tac something. On their pillow. He wants you to put a Tic Tac on their pillow. I'm thinking like an entire box of like, you know, um, Mozart Kuglins or Ferrer Rocher's, something like that. And then having this little card, so blessed to have you. I think that would be a really sweet little, sweet little gift. So here we go. And for this one, we're also stamping it in paprika. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Make sure this is in the corner just in case we have to double stamp it because I think I forgot to season this stamp. Let's see how it did without seasoning. Nope, it did not work because I didn't season it. So we're going to push it over there in the corner again. We're going to stamp it again. And there's the lesson. It, you wouldn't think that rubbing your hands on new stamps would make that big of a difference, but it really does. So let's try it again. Make sure it's in the corner. And we'll do it pretty good. And it's kind of close to the edge, so you may want to push it just a little bit harder. Um, they do have these, oh, that's much better. They do have these things called misty corners that you can put in the corners that move your paper away from these sides. I don't have any. Um, I have them on my Amazon list. I just keep waiting for the price to go down because, you know, I can't buy, I can't buy all the things. I want to, but I can't buy all the things. I have to be a little, little picky. Haven't figured out how to get that money tree in the backyard to start producing. Okay, so we are all done with the Misty. Um, the next type of stamping I'm going to show you is going to be our second generation stamping and that is difficult to do with the Misty. So that is the one thing I say don't, don't use the Misty on. So I should be using a smaller block. That's the other thing. It'll tell you what size blocks you need. Um, but I cannot find my little one by one block. I did something with it and it disappeared. So we're just gonna use this as a one by three, I think. One by three? One by three and a half. So I'm just gonna put my little acorn in the very center, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to take this white piece of paper that you cut, and oh, the first thing we're gonna do, put that off to the side. Put it on the, see, that's how I lose stamps. I stick them on here and then they walk away. So we are going to use that, that stitch line. And we do that in charcoal. And it's going to be stamped at the very center, I'm sorry, center side to side and two inches down, okay? So I'm gonna move this up to the six so that I know I need to stamp it here right around the four <clears throat> and centered from side to side. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. If I totally mess it up, this is just white cardstock, I can cut another one or I can flip it over. 
card paper's got two sides. Okay, so I know I want to be at the four and I want to be in the middle. So we're going to call that the middle. And that worked pretty good. Okay, so I think we're done with the charcoal. So you'll put that over there and clean this off. Put it on our carrier sheet so, you know, we don't do dumb things like I usually do. And pick up the, pick up the acorn. And it sometimes helps if you put it on the block straight. Makes it easier to line stuff up if everything's on there straight. Okay. So the first step that we're going to do is we are going to stamp with three acorns and you can see the instructions here off to the side. We're going to stamp three acorns. The first one is going to be in paprika and then without re-inking it, we're going to move over and we're going to stamp another one and it's going to give us two different tones of paprika and this is called second generation stamping and this is a way that you can get more mileage out of, whoa, more mileage out of the stamps you have. Um, cause you know, not everybody can just up and buy every single color in the rainbow. Um, so if you don't have the color you, you want or you need, try to see if you do a second generation, if it turns out to be the color you really want. Okay. So we will do paprika here in the middle. Okay. And then without re-stamp, without putting ink on it again, we're going to stamp right next to it. And look at that. That is really pretty. Okay, so we're done with this. We're gonna clean our stamp real quick. Let me just wipe it off real quick with the, and make sure it's dry. Then get your saffron out, and you're gonna do another acorn on the other side in saffron. Okay, so we will try to make sure, watch, I'm sorry, my head's in the way probably. There we go. And it's a little bit splotchy, but like I said before, it will, it'll even out, it'll straighten out um, as it dries. That's the beauty of dye inks. Okay, so we will put that on the carrier sheet and we're done with that. And I think it's time to put our card together. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we are going to put... A, B, C, and D all on here. So this is A, this big piece is A. So we are going to take our skinny piece, which is this one right here, which is C, and it needs to be up about a quarter inch from the bottom. The top of it needs to be at a half an inch. And again, it's not, it's, it's not the end of the world if you get it, you know, a little bit more up or down. Because when you look at the design of the card, it's not imperative that everything lines up exactly perfectly. Now, there are some cards that you have to be very careful with, but this isn't one of them. So we will do our eyeballing and get it on there. That looks about right. Push it down to get that glue to adhere. And this looks like I didn't cut it exactly perfect. So I'm glad this is one that we don't put on the card base yet. So just give that a trim and get rid of that little tiny, look like a 16th of an inch, or maybe even the 32nd. Okay, so this time we're gonna use, we're gonna use these little acorn paper. This is such a cute paper. And all of our paper is double-sided. And this particular kit uses both sides of the paper as you've seen and shows you different ways that you can use it. Now, another thing that's really cool with these kits is you can take this design and these cutting guides and use different paper. So if you wanna use, oops, wrong scissors, I almost did it. Um, if you wanna just say use this design for Valentine's Day cards and just get some Valentine's paper and all you're gonna need is all you're going to need is two solid colors that coordinate with whatever your one fancy paper is. And you can make your cards. So, yeah. OK, 
tape. So now we're going to glue that down. This is wide enough, so we'll use our tape runner. If you feel more comfortable using the liquid glue for everything, by just do it. Do it for everything. Just be careful with liquid glue that you don't use too much because it will warp your paper. Um, this is a really good um, liquid glue to use if you like to use liquid glue other than um, just the zig glue that I've been using. This is also a really good glue. And I kind of go back and forth. Now this has um, some twine that's wrapped around and then a ribbon or a bow tied. So we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna do a bow. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to wrap this this way and we're going to tape that down. So we'll tape that down, we'll wrap it, make sure that it looks straight. Okay, and then we'll get another piece of tape, wrap that there. And I am sorry that this, this video seems to have gone really long, but hopefully you're getting some good technique out of it. Um, and um, I probably should have told you at the beginning, but you can always speed it up. Use the little gear, turn the gear, and you can speed up videos. You can also slow them down if I get to go in too fast for you, or if like on some of my process videos, um, I have it going too fast, so so we will we will give the bow a try. I may have cut it too short to do a bow. I did. So on this one, we're not going to do a bow because I cut it too short. And that happens. And if it happens, it's no big deal. We're going to fray our little edges to make it look kind of you know nice and textured and then we'll be adding this be adding this to our card base and I think I'll go ahead and pop this up on foam tape since we have this um, twine going on what happens when you don't do that is you end up with like this ridge and I just I just don't think it looks it looks very nice so that's why i do it you know i kind of like that more so than the bow on the picture i like that oh and one last thing is we have this little guy who goes right there now you can choose to do that there you can choose to put this inside the card if you wanted to put some sort of a sentiment on the inside i'm going to go ahead and put it right there but i'm going to put it on with a glue dot the reason I'm going to do that is it gives it just a little bit of dimension without giving it as much as you get with foam tape, but it'll still give it a little bit of dimension. And the fact that we have the other one stamped, it'll give it a shadow if anyone looks at it from the side. Okay. So what we're going to do next, we're going to make sure this fits. It does. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on. Let's see. You know what, I am going, yep, I'm gonna put it on the foam tape. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut, oops, wrong one. We're gonna cut it this way, and then we're gonna cut a strip that's gonna go on the other side. So we're kinda doing a one-third, two-thirds to go on the other side of that twine. And that may even still be too wide. We shall see. Let's go ahead and put this down. And we'll see how that looks. Oh, I think it'll I think it'll work. Yeah, it'll work. You just don't want your foam tape too close to the edge. Um, another thing you can do is you can use fun foam. Um, I've also seen people use um, extra cardstock and just layer several pieces together to make it thick. And that's a good way to use um, some of your little scrap cardstock that um, you didn't need for a project. So we'll do one more here in the middle and then I think we'll be good. And that'll be our last card. And while I'm doing this, I just wanna thank you if you have stuck with this for the whole thing and listen to me ramble. 
that is that's an, if you were one of those let me know down in the comments that you stayed till the end um because that's that's commendable right there <clears throat> yeah, we got that last one and i was able to pull those off with my with my fingernails so that was kind of nice and there we go so there is the three cards that are the Hawthorne um, card making kit. And um, if you have any questions about anything I've done, any of the techniques I use, um, just leave me a comment down below. If you did make it all the way to the end, again, congratulations. Let me know you made it to the end. That's awesome. And um, I will leave a link down to my store if you would like to pick this up. Now this is only available through the end of October. So unfortunately it has a very short time that it'll still be available in our catalog. Um, I really, I really like this. Um, I really hope you give it a try. And if you're not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you stick around and I hope y'all have a great day. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.